we give you praise. Glory and honor belongs to you. We thank you for the privilege to see this light of the day. It has taken your hand, it has taken your power, it has taken your grace. And Lord, we are so grateful to trust in you, so grateful to believe in you, so grateful to follow your steps. Your word says you go before us and because we are your sheep, we hear your voice and Lord, we follow you. I pray that the small still voice in, our, in you will come to our ears and we will follow it today. Glorify your name in this studio and everywhere else. People are following. Father, we pray that you glorify your name, that Lord, you direct our steps. We give you praise and we give you glory. Bless everyone, Lord. Bless everyone that is tuning in. Minister to us, O oh Lord, minister to us, we pray. We surrender to you and ask you to reign, O oh God. Magnify your name in our midst. Let your voice be clearly heard to us, O oh God. We thank you. We take authority over spirits, over powers, over the forces of the darkness of this world. We subdue them under our feet this morning, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. And pray that you reign. O oh Lord, we pray that you reign this morning. We give you praise. All the glory belongs to you. Reign, Father. We pray that you reign, King of glory. We pray that you manifest your power, manifest your glory, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we pray that everyone that has put their trust in you, no one will be disappointed. Your mercies are new every morning, and great is your faithfulness. We worship you, and we bless you. We nullify anything that devil has arrayed against us today. We nullify by the word of God. We nullify by the power in the blood of Jesus and pray that, Lord, every one of us will experience you in our areas of life. Be magnified. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Wow, it's a blessing to be alive and to see the light of the day. God has given us an opportunity to experience his mercies and his grace again. The Bible says the mercies of God are new every morning and great is his faithfulness. And so we want to thank God who has been continuously a shield, a buckler, a running place. He's been a source of our strength whenever we run out of strength. The Bible says those who wait upon him, they shall renew their strength. So this morning I pray that your strength will be renewed in God and there will be no reason for, for you to be discouraged. God is very close even to energize. I want us to continue our sharing today's uh, lesson. We want to move every step of our life with the Holy Spirit. We want to move every step of our life with the Holy Spirit. Remember, we want to read Acts of the Apostles, chapter number 19. Uh, the reason why the Apostle Paul asked the question to the brethren of Ephesus in verse number 2. Acts of the Apostles, chapter number 19. Let's read from the Message Bible, verse number 19. The Apostle Paul asked a very strong question here. The first thing he said, the first thing he said was, Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? And then he also said, Did you take God into your mind only? Or did you also impress him with your heart? Did he get inside you? We have never even heard of that. A Holy Spirit. God within us. Amen. That is a question that was posed by the Apostle to the brethren of Ephesus, asking them, did you just embrace God you know, with your mind only? Or you allowed him to be in your heart? But they said they have never heard about the Holy Spirit. So he went ahead to explain to them and then they received him. The question now comes, why should we receive the Holy Spirit in our life? It is because we have chosen to be spiritual. God is spirit. And those who follow God, worship him, they have to worship him in truth that he is spirit. But number one, why should we follow after God? That is the question we want to address. God has to order our steps. God has to guide us. And so we want to read Romans chapter number 8, verse number 14 and 15. And build on that, Romans 8, Romans 8, 
You want to read verse number 14 and 15 because from there we will draw our lesson. Number 14 in the Message Bible, the Bible says, God's Spirit beckons. There are things to do. There are places to go. God's Spirit beckons. There are things to do. There are places to go. Powerful interpretation. King James Version says, For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Number one point here, when the Holy Spirit is not leading you, God is not leading you, and so he's not your father. So Paul said, as an identity that you have God, you has, his spirit has to be new. Why? Because God is interested with our life to lead us. God wants to be in charge. Why? Because he created us. We belong to God, Psalms 24. The Bible says the earth and the fullness thereof belong to God and the people. He created people that he may guide them. He created people that he may walk with them every step of their life. So the Bible says, as many as are led by the Spirit of God, then they are sons of God. God will only know you are his when he can determine your daily program. So your waking up should be by him. What exact time are you waking up? Is it by the Spirit or by the flesh? When it is the Spirit of God who is leading us, we will wake up the time of the Spirit. We will go to sleep at the time the Holy Ghost wants us to sleep. And then in the day, the 12 hours we have in the day, He will be involved in every step of the day because there is another force, there is another power from another end that wants to have a share in every activity of our life. For the flesh to manifest. But God is interested to walk into our life through our mind. The mind is the gateway. And then settle in our hearts to walk every step with us. If you have ever seen a successful person, God was behind it. If you have, never, if you have ever seen somebody moving from grace to grace, from glory to a higher glory, God was behind their steps. That is why David says the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. So the Holy Spirit, when he comes in our life, he will tap the program of God from his heart. First Corinthians chapter number 2, verse number 10. When you are spiritually minded, when your heart is filled with the Spirit of God, no one knows the thoughts of a man except the Spirit of that man. And so the Spirit of God knows the thoughts of God. He will pick the thoughts of God and cause, you know, paste them into our heart. He will pick the program of heaven and, you know, cast it into, so that you really know what God wants you to do this very day, the following day. So your program will be the heavenly program. Remember Isaiah says in 55 verse 11, our thoughts are not his thoughts in verse number 8, 55 Isaiah. Our thoughts are not his thoughts, neither are our ways his ways. His ways are higher. His thoughts are higher. We don't want to walk on lower ways that are non-productive, that are of failure, defeat, with many mistakes. The Holy Spirit wants to come into our life to raise us to the ways of God so that every step we make, we are making with God. And that is why the scripture says, for as many as are led by the Spirit, you have to ask yourself, did I make the move I made through prayer, through reading the Word of God, through the counsel of the Spirit? You see, when you delight in the Lord, you have allowed His Spirit to be your friend. You delight in Him. He orders your steps. He guides your path. The Bible says, whatsoever thing you do, you prosper, because it's God who gave you that step. When God is guiding you, He is happy with you and he guarantees your success and your prosperity. So we say that the, the, the saints in Ephesus who are missing the guidance of God, 
they were without the Holy Spirit. That means they were intellectually looking at things, perhaps through their mind. You can think it is by the Spirit, but it's just limited in your soul. The soul has intelligence. Sometimes people can, you can easily think it's by the Spirit, but it's just by a mere human intelligence. Like the governments of Nebuchadnezzar, the governments of Pharaoh. They had intelligent people, but they were not seeing the future by the Spirit. But when Joseph comes, he saw by the Spirit, and he guided them by the Spirit 14 years of success, because somebody was led by the Spirit to guide Egypt into prosperity. And you see the same with Daniel, because he had the Spirit of God. Then the governments of Nebuchadnezzar, Belshazzar, and three regimes, they depended on a man whose inside the holy spirit dwell and he was preferred of the president why because there was peace with every program that he gave so i want to say this we have to settle for allowing the holy spirit to sit in our hearts and light and illuminate and order our steps on that same very note romans 14 8 14 remember psalms 119 was verse 105 that says the word of God is lamp to our feet and light to our path. When the Holy Spirit is in our life, he opens scripture in us. He opens the scriptures we know in us. Every scripture that is required for today, he will give it to you. And that scripture will be the lamp to your feet and light to your path. You need to understand that. When the Holy Spirit, when you are filled with the Holy Spirit, you could have read the Bible, you could have had sermons, you could have everywhere you went and you were taught so many things. But there is a Rema word for today. There is what you need for your circumstance this day. The work of the Holy Spirit in our life is to light up that scripture, is to bring that scripture to your very moment. Say you are going through a hardship. He will guide you by the word of God not to succumb to the pains of the hardship. He will guide you to the place of prayer or he will guide you to somebody to counsel you. He is with you every step of your way. So the Holy Spirit is your umpire. He is your referee. There is no game on the pitch without a referee. To see those who are stepping on others, to see those who want to score and they are offside, the Holy Spirit in us will help us to move every step with god every step because he's, the word of god is with us yes but there are there is that word for today the rema word not the locust the rema word the quickened word it becomes light to our path and lamb to our feet so that is the work of the holy spirit you see what it says in the message bible the same scripture he beckons he quickens a scripture comes to you so heavily and it's telling you do this it is telling you go this direction the message bible on romans 8 14 a scripture is quickened in you beckoning you go to pray you just realize you have a heaviness to pray from joel chapter number two you sound an alarm if you are a pastor and a leader of a congregation a scripture comes to you and you are like i feel an anointing to lead the church in prayer and fasting that is how the Holy Spirit leads people. He beckons you. There are things to do. There are places to go. He can quicken you to visit somebody and take something to them. Yet, you'd come to realize later on that person was in need of whatever you are taking there. So, we have to allow the Holy Spirit to come in our life and interact with our spirit. Interact with our spirit so that we are an extension of the Heavenly Father. Look at Romans 8:15, the next verse to 14. We become an extension of the heavens. The hand of God is in us. God is holding us by his right hand so that we are children is the father. You know, the father does not go to the shop. The children go to the shop. It is the father who wants items for the family, but the children have to go to the shop. So the father will say, go, pick this money, go. When we become the children of God, he will use us. He will guide us. He will send us. Isaiah said, I had a conversation in heaven. God asking, whom will I send? When the Holy Spirit is in you, you will hear that conversation. Today, you just didn't woke up. He has spoken to you. He is guiding you. So you are a son in the kingdom of God that the Father can take you and the Father can bring you back. So you will hear. 
You see, you will hear his voice because his spirit is in you. You will hear his voice. And after you have finished the first assignment, in the evening you tell him, Papa or Father, what is it that I have to do the following day? Because you are being led, you are being guided by the Holy Spirit. So I wonder why the, 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 the brethren in Ephesus were without him and they were like, we've never even heard about him. It makes me to talk about the Holy Spirit every day. He comes to remind us. He comes to counsel us. He comes to guide us. But I want to say this, most importantly, every program we have every day is able to guide us because we are children and God is our Father. Look at King James Version on the same verse, Romans 8.15. For we have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. We have been adopted into a family. God is the Father. When you live in a certain home, the father of the home is the one who runs the programs. The rest of the children, the workers, they receive a program from the head of the family. So when we receive the Holy Spirit, we are adopted. We were of the world. We now become children of God. Our Father who is God, He has a program, He has an agenda, He has a specific path He wants us to take, the specific role He wants us to, to play, and every day, by His still small voice, He will speak to His children, Son, go this direction. And when God leads you in a direction, success is guaranteed, prosperity is guaranteed. So you see many people making mistakes, they have not listened to Him. That is why we go to Him in prayer. Early in the morning, Bible says in Proverbs 8:17, those who seek him early in the morning, they will find him. You have to ask the Father by the Spirit, what program do you have for me today? Because I need success, I need to prosper, I need to succeed, whatever you need. Because we are now sons in the kingdom. We emphasize that we are now sons in the kingdom. The Spirit of God bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. Verse number 16. If you are a child of God, Yes, if you are a child of God, God must lead you. If you are a child of God, you follow the program of your father. You cannot run a program in a home that is not yours. You only have to follow the program of the one who is your father, the one who is the head. The body does not run itself. It receives instruction from the brain. God is the head. God is the, the one in charge. It is him to determine our steps. And as I said, when you see people living and moving from grace to grace, from level to level, it is because there is one stronger than them who is giving them a stronger program. There is one higher than them who is giving them powerful thoughts. So relinquish that position you have where you guide yourself and allow the Holy Spirit to settle on your heart, to guide you, to direct you, to advise you, to be your counselor. He's a counselor. Bible talks about him as a counselor. And he's given to us to direct our paths. I want to speak to somebody that woke up today. You are confused in your place of work. Calm down. Speak some few words to the Holy Spirit. And tell him, show me the program in this place of work. Let me have the best program ever for this day. And I tell you, before long, in 20 minutes time, your mind will be refreshed. Your spirit will be, you know, rejuvenized by the power of the Holy Spirit. And I want to tell you, you will only hear your boss. If you have a boss in a place of work telling you you are right, what you are doing is right, because you will be led, governed, directed by the Holy Spirit. Every company you think belongs to somebody, he is only a steward. That company belongs to God. God will give you the best thought for that company guided by the principles of the company but god will explain them so clearly to you and when you interpret them well like joseph you will be at the top so we need to be children of god how when the spirit of god is guiding us we need to be children of god when the holy spirit is holding us by the right hand of god every step we make you see when you are holding a child's hand they don't make mistakes in walking they follow your path when the Holy Spirit is in us, the hand of God is holding us. The hand of God is guiding us. God is taking us every step we take. We have to be very careful to, to, to know God is with me. Because one of the indicators is the peace of God. When you have peace with what you are doing, many times 
you have peace and you've been praying and you have peace with what you are doing god is in what you are doing the holy spirit is giving you that peace he's speaking to you and he's telling you right you are a child of god look at verse number 16 romans 8 16 the spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are children of god and if children then heirs heirs of god and joined heirs with christ if so be that we suffer with him that we may also be glorified with him now we are children of god the spirit of god in us witnesses with our spirit he bears witness you are not yourself you are a child of god wonderful it is a powerful thing to be a child of god beloved it is a powerful thing to be a child of god it is higher than being a, a son to any senior person in government they are humans they have many errors but when we are children of god we are raised together with jesus we are seated in heavenly places the bible says if then if we be children of god we are heirs and joined heirs with christ that means we have been enjoined with christ and as he was resurrecting receiving a new body we have also been given a new body a spiritual body and so together with christ by the holy spirit even though your flesh is on the ground but your spirit is lifted together with jesus in heavenly places your perspective on things is far higher than the perspective of ordinary people your thoughts are super why they are guided by god guided by the word of god that is why daniel and his three friends they were 10 times better when given an exam after a period of time they refused to defile themselves with the foods of babylon and they were given an exam being guided by god because they were praying they were 10 times better so it is advantageous for you to surrender to the holy spirit by all means in your home in your place of work in ministry you will realize you just have your own standard god's standard becomes your portion i pray that you'll be led by the spirit it is so good to be led by the spirit he guides us and he raises our standard higher you may just appear to be the man people know but after people come to analyze between you and others you will realize you are several steps better you are 10 times you are several times better why the one who is in you greater is he that is in you powerful is he that is in you intelligent is he that is in you the holy spirit he brings jesus into you every exam jesus was given by pharisees they scored zero he got marks they bring an adulterous woman thinking they will capture him by that event he captured them they left their stones they ran away he was 10 times better why he was by the spirit he was guided by the spirit and we can borrow from jesus and wake up early in the morning and pray father i ask for your spirit to guide me i ask for the holy spirit to lead me every exam every challenge every obstacle that will come your way you are raised together with jesus because me and jesus you and jesus we are heirs of god we are joined heirs we have inherited god our portion in this world is not wealth our portion in this world is god god is our friend he is our father we are children and he is quickly willing to advise to counsel to direct every step you go everything you do he is involved i want to tell you we have few years to live on earth we will not be wasting time going to places he has not said you return you have wasted money you went to look for somebody who never saw him because god never said you came back you are grieved you are disturbed no when you are led by the spirit you will be quickened when there is somebody you are going to see and when you get there they will be waiting for you because god will have quickened them you will minimize on time you will minimize on losses why because god is guiding your life i want to challenge everyone business person a married person a youth everyone you need the holy spirit to sit in your heart and guide your way he is in you and you are in him so that your steps be guided by the lord listen one day david with his friends in the scriptures they returned to their camp and they found out they had been looted of their wives of their properties and many things 
Then they all cried until nobody had strength left with them. They cried, but afterwards, David did not just stop there. He went and inquired of the Lord. That is what it means to be guided by the Lord. You have a friend you can run to in crisis when things are not working. So he inquired from God, what should I do? Should I pursue the enemies? And if I pursue them, will I recover? God spoke to David. Why? Because they were friends. Remember at one time, even after he sinned, he still ran to God and he told him, I cannot live without your spirit. Why? I need him every step that I take. So God spoke to David and told him, pursue the enemies. You will recover the things. And that is what you need. Don't pursue what you cannot recover. You will waste your energy and your time. But when the Holy Spirit is with you, he can see beyond. He can see the enemies and then he can tell you, pursue. You will recover. And there are things you can recover today. There are things you can recover today. Time lost, money lost, friends you lost. By the Spirit of God, I prophesy recovery. May the Holy Spirit back on your spirit and guide you to recover something. Guide you to recover some mileage you lost in work. May the Lord by His Spirit guide you for recovery. So you need to understand it is the will of God to be involved in your program. So that He can take you higher. So that He can take you to a greater level. As a hair together with Christ to the things which God has given unto us. We need to fight hard that God will order our steps. Can I finish with Galatians chapter number 5 verse number 25. Galatians 5:25. We are children of God, we are children of God, we are not guided by the flesh, we are guided by the Spirit. The Bible says, if we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. You cannot just say you are a born-again believer, but you run your own programs. No. If you are truly born again, ask God and tell Him, I want to go. Where do I go? I want to do what do I do he will help us walk there is living and then there is walking that is what it says let us also walk in the spirit so you should not just pray in tongues pray in tongues and then after praying in tongues you do your own things no <laughs> you have to ask God yes order my steps go with me because you will walk and some will drive. Where are you driving to? Where are you flying to? Is that program from heaven? Are those activities, you know, stamped by the heavens? May the Holy Spirit help us walk, go the journey with Him. Because if He goes with us, results are assured. Victory is assured. I prophesy today that by the Spirit of God, you will go out and by the Spirit of God, you will return. And I guarantee in the evening you will have songs of praise. I guarantee that by the evening you will recover some of the friends you lost. In the evening, some of the monies that you are disturbing, they will already be aligned to return to your account. God does not miss any step. Any step God gives you to go, it is assured. Men will give you steps that are, you know, 50-50, but God is full, 100%. He will give you recovery, He will give you everything that you need. So if you are living by the Spirit, or in the Spirit, then let us walk in the Spirit. Our walk with God. Let us walk with God. Enoch walked with God until he was no more. He was glorified. He was no more. Let us walk with God every step of the way. And we're going to register testimonies. I love when people have testimonies. You can look back and say, this far the Lord has taken me. Ebenezer, this far, that is my prayer. And I pray that by the evening, you will say, Ebenezer, the far God has brought me. You can see the volume of things you have done, the things you never would have done by your own power and in your own strength. Why should we struggle and we have a helper? His name is the Holy Spirit. He wants to go every step with us and could there be somebody who is not born again you are running your own program you are doing your own things the devil has also an opportunity through your flesh he can even pick you from the place of work and take you to evil you come back guilty you cannot even do anything you are almost being threatened with a sack because you are drunk because you are found in evil no 
you have room to allow the Holy Spirit to reign in you and to help you overcome habits that are bad, character that is not of God. The Holy Spirit will help you to overcome and you live a peaceful life. You only need to give your life to Jesus. After he gets into you and you are born again, his spirit will come to abide. And when he abides, he will go every step with you. It is by you believing Jesus that he died and you believe that he resurrected. You will be born again. We were not born born again. We were born ordinary people. We gave our life to Jesus. But every day, his spirit is guiding our life. And today is your day if you are not born again. You will have to repeat this prayer of salvation after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I'm a sinner and I ask you to come into my life. Come into my life and change me. I am born again, forgiven and filled with your spirit. Amen. If you pray that prayer, God has put his spirit in you, Ephesians 1.14, as a stamp, as a seal that you are his. When he sees his spirit in you, it is a sign that you are his and that in future you have a bigger inheritance, the full measure of what God has in store for you. So by the spirit of God, you're going to prosper, you're going to excel, you're going to see the light in the darkness of your life. God wants to light our way. God wants to light our way. We are going to see many good things happen in our life. Amen. I want to speak a blessing to everyone that has been following. Whoever you are, you've spared your time to follow this program. I speak a prayer and trust God that you will fill you with the Holy Spirit. Father, fill every follower, everyone that has listened to this word. Jesus said, these words I speak are spirit and they are life. I pray that by reason of their hearing, Lord, let them receive the spirit of God and life. May the spirit of God give life to them and order their steps. We thank you and we bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. So you have received a scripture and the guidance of the Lord. That is life and that is spirit. Walk in that direction and the Lord will bless you. Welcome you to our fellowship on Sunday, 6.30 and then up to 9.30 and then from 9.30 to, 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 to midday. We are there teaching and praying together and allowing God to guide our steps as we prosper in this land. You are most welcome. Come with a friend. Those who are within uh, Jomvu from Mikinani side, a light at the Catholic Pope Francis Church. On the left, you ask for JCC, and then you will see God. Uh, you will see God blessing you as you come to fellowship with us. You can give an offering. There are numbers on your screens to help you serve the Lord. We love to fellowship with God, with what he has given us, and he has never failed to bless our life. The Lord bless you. May the Lord order your steps. Bye-bye.